this is a uh, three-quarter scale replica of the original Spirit of St. Louis. And we chose three-quarter scale on this particular airplane because the original Wright J5 was the power plant. Uh, the modern Rotec radial happens to be exactly three-quarter of the size, uh, approximately three-quarter of the horsepower. So uh, we designed the airplane literally to maintain the lines around, around the Rotec radial engine. Yeah, but you don't have like 200 gallons of fuel on this one. No, the original I believe had 425 gallons uh, fuel. We just we just have 20 gallons in this particular airplane. Uh, the way it's set up, there's an opening up there where the original fuel tank was was located. Uh, if you notice, the pilot actually flies out of the almost out of the back seat of this airplane, flies af after the wing, and uh, the fuel tank on the original airplane set up right underneath the wing. Well, now we've got an opening there. If a guy wants to put a jump seat for a you know passenger or child seat or something, there'd be enough room to put a second person up there without the big fuel tank. Now, how did you get involved with this? Is this something that you just decided to do yourself or customer ordered? Or? Well, it's kind of a long story, but uh, we, we got contacted by uh, some uh, gentlemen who's interested in doing this for a static display. And then we chose, uh, we talked about flying the airplane before we put it on static display. So the project started to take on a little bit of life of its own. So uh, we went in and built the airplane as an aerodrome air, aeroplanes aircraft. Ultimately, I think it has a home in St. Louis. Now, this airplane, is it using the same construction techniques as your other aircraft? Uh, mostly. Uh, we, we varied a little bit. In the, our, our Sopwith Camel, we use a 4130 fuselage. This particular airplane also has a 4130 fuselage. Because of the outrigger gear, there's, there's a lot of involvement in this, so we chose to build it out of 4130. And then typical, rest of aircraft's typical construction, aluminum tail feathers, aluminum vertical fin, horizontal stabilizer, aluminum wings, uh, ribs, and things like that. Now, performance-wise, then, how would this aircraft compare to, say, the original? Uh, it should be similar in speed. We're, we're looking at a projected cruise speed of about 115 miles an hour. Uh, top speed about 125, uh, stalled around 44, 45 miles an hour. Now, is this going to be uh, part of your stable, or you feel this will just be a, like a one-off? Well, it, it originally was built as a one-off, and now the, the interest level seems to be very high, so it's most likely going to become one of our stable of aircraft. And how long would it take somebody to, to build uh, something like this? Uh, this airplane means it is a 4130 fuselage. Yet that's pre-welded with the kit if we choose to go with the kit. Uh, it should take somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 man-hours to build. And construction in the wings, is it using the same style of construction as the original? Uh, well, the original had a wood wing. This has an aluminum tube uh, spar and then aluminum ribs. So it's, it's built more like the rest of our replicas would be. And I noticed you've got the the old style wheels with your uh, covers on that type of thing? Yeah, these are actually, we've been building 19 inch wheels for a while. These are actually 21s. Uh, so we build a new 21 inch tired wheel with new wheel covers and stuff with, with the ground, ground smooth tires. Uh, Robert, in the past I know that you've designed a number of aircraft for movies. Uh, I don't suppose this is going into a movie. Not this particular aircraft. Uh, however, when we do get home, we've got another movie deal. We're working on some other World War One aircraft with. What type of, uh, I mean, what other movies have you uh, worked on uh, in the past? Well, the Flyboys movie, uh, all the flyable aircraft you saw for that movie is built by Aerodrome Aeroplanes. And then the movie Amelia, we provided a couple of the antique aircraft for that, the filming of that show as well. Oh, the one for Flyboys, though, I thought a lot of the filming was done right in uh, England. It was. We built the aircraft, uh, my shop there in Holden, Missouri, and then we uh, took the aircraft over to England and did the flying and filming in England. How many aircraft were involved in that? Uh, we built four uh, specifically for the shoot. They show up as approximately 16 different airplanes throughout the throughout the movie, but uh, we built four aircraft for that. Oh, uh, uh, the Amelia movie, I think, was shot in some of it in Canada, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah, we built a uh, Bolero, uh, 1909 Bolero Model 11, and then a uh, Marine Sonnure. Those two airplanes were taken up to Toronto and filmed up there in a field in Toronto to represent a a uh, 1920s, 30s Kansas wheat field. He also built an airplane that, uh, to reenact the uh, flight across the English Channel, did you not? Correct, yeah. After that movie was complete, we had a gentleman contact us uh, who had to dream to fly across the English Channel on the 100th anniversary of that. So we uh, we built a full-scale Blario uh, with a Rotec radial, and he reenacted that 100th anniversary uh, channel crossing with that aircraft. So how many aircraft do you have in your stable right now? Uh, we have 24 aircraft. This is our 24th year at Oshkosh. And this is our 24th aircraft we've introduced. So we've introduced a brand new aircraft every year for 24 years. And how many of your aircraft do you 
aircraft that go flying in the world now? Uh, don't know the exact numbers, it's hard to track, but several hundred aircraft are flying. Now, Robert, say somebody wanted to get in contact with you to build a specific aircraft, uh, you know, World War I uh, vintage. How do you go about that process? Well, just give me a call, uh, talk to me a little bit about the pro what, what interests you. We, we do a lot of that one-off stuff for museums uh, where they're needing a specific aircraft that don't exist. Uh, the movie companies we've done a few for and things like that. So uh, just contact us at aerodromeaeroplanes.com. Uh, give us a call and we'll talk to you about the project. Maybe we can get involved and help make it happen. Now, what is required for that? Like, is the, You don't always have blueprints for a lot of this stuff anymore. Like, how do you... How do you come about so that you've got an airplane basically working from nothing? Well, that's basically what my specialty. We just get some original three view drawings, the best we can get, uh, get as many pictures and documentation on the aircraft. I do some research, I study the aircraft a little bit, uh, determine a few of the important dimensions such as core uh, stations, locations and stuff like that. And then I back in and I do a, a totally new design within those parameters. So, But when you get one of these airplanes, we have all modern control systems, modern airfoils. They're just modeled and shaped after the original dimensional aircraft. So if somebody wanted to get in touch with you and get a little more information, what's the easiest way to do that? Uh, www.aerodromeaeroplanes.com or our phone number is 816-230-8585. Our address is 929 Northwest Road 1571, Holden, Missouri, 64040. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.